Hey everyone, we know how hard it can be to keep up with the latest news in Israel, so if you haven't had the time to stay on top of what's what in the Holy Land, have no worries. I'm Natasha Kirchuk, and this is ILTV's Weekly Review. Well, this evening, Israel is set to announce the final yet unofficial results of Monday's elections, and so far the numbers seem to be clear. Over 99 percent of the votes have been counted, and like we reported yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's Likud party has won 36 seats, while his main opposition, Blue and White, has won 33. But it looks like Israel is still facing a political deadlock because after adding up all of the seats, the right-wing bloc only has 58 and the left-wing bloc only has 55, meaning that both do not pass that threshold of 61 seats to form a government coalition. Still, the final results of the election will only be made official next Monday. And as of now, on the right, the ultra-Orthodox parties of Shas and United Torah Judaism have nine and seven seats, respectively. Yamina has six seats. On the left, the joint Arab list has won an unprecedented 15 seats. And Labour Gesher Meretz has won seven. And finally, Avigdor Lieberman's Israel Beitenu party, which refuses to sit with either side for now, has seven seats. Now, this means that the right-wing bloc is now three seats away from hitting that 61-seat minimum, like I said before, to form a coalition, which is why Likud says it's planning to woo over lawmakers from across the aisle to join a Netanyahu-led government and, of course, avert a fourth round of elections. Now, in the meantime, the Israel Beitenu party has just announced on Thursday that it would support a law barring Prime Minister Netanyahu from forming the next government, which will likely ensure a majority for the legislation in the Knesset. And an additional law is also going to be voted on that would limit the tenure of a prime minister to two terms. Both laws are actually aimed directly at Netanyahu, who has served four terms as the Israeli prime minister and is headed to trial for charges of corruption on March 17th. The Israeli leader is hitting back, of course, and accusing his main rival, Benny Gantz, from the Blue and White Party of attempting to undermine democracy and defy the public by seeking legislation against him. He says, Gantz lost and now he is trying to steal the election. My friends and I, millions of citizens who supported us, will not let that happen. All right, Israel is dramatically widening its rules against the coronavirus, and not everybody is happy about the panic that it's causing. The Jewish holiday of Purim, which is essentially Israel's Halloween, is being severely affected. Now Greece says that 21 tourists who visited Israel are sick with the coronavirus. Now, like we said, coronavirus panic is taking over Israel as the health ministry increases its orders to prevent the spread of the disease in Israel. An estimated 70,000 Israelis are now in self-quarantine, so... Who is being affected? That's right. Even all of the Israelis who have come from these European countries within the last 14 days have to self-quarantine. Foreigners who have been in most Asian countries or Iraq, Syria, or Lebanon in the 14 days before their arrival to Israel will also not be allowed in Israel. And Israel is now banning gatherings of over 5,000 people, which means that all the major concerts, parties, and parades for the upcoming Pulliam holiday are now canceled. And anyone who has been abroad over the last two weeks is also banned from any gathering of 100 people or more. The IDF is also forbidding all soldiers from traveling abroad and canceling all international exercises. And the health ministry is even urging Israelis to avoid all physical contact, including kissing Jewish mezuzot. <laughs> Israel is taking more severe precaution against the spread of the coronavirus than other countries, but is facing criticism even from officials within the own government. Authorities are lambasting the strict restrictions as placing the country's economy in jeopardy. And so far, over 94,000 people have been infected with the coronavirus worldwide. 3,200 people have died, but China claims that there has been a slowdown in new cases out of the country still. Health officials are concerned by the rather high death rate of the virus, claiming that about 3.4 percent of those with the disease have passed away. The common seasonal flu, on the other hand, generally kills fewer than 1 percent.
week, more and more information is coming out. Uh, but it's important to keep in mind that an American woman who was actually recently in Jerusalem has also just been diagnosed with the coronavirus. Uh, so Israelis are are taking precaution and you know anybody who was in contact with her is now also going into quarantine. Okay, now it is confirmed three more Israelis have been diagnosed with coronavirus, bringing the official count in Israel to 15. And among the infected are a ninth grader from central Israel and two elementary school employees whose students are also now in quarantine. But now, with maybe the worst timing possible, new reports suggest that Prime Minister Netanyahu might be next. The whole of Israel is waiting to hear the final election count, but Prime Minister Netanyahu's thoughts are likely now divided, with one ear to the results of the vote and the other towards the condition of IDF Major General Aaron Haliva. Haliva is the head of the IDF Operations Directorate, but he's now nearing the end of a two-week home quarantine after returning from a personal trip to Italy in February. And this is a concern to the Prime Minister's office because Haliva, Prime Minister Netanyahu, Defense Minister Bennett, and a number of other high-ranking officials met shortly after Haliva's return to discuss the recent escalations in violence with Islamic Jihad terrorists in Gaza. So far, though, Haliva is thankfully healthy, and there's no evidence that he came in contact with the Prime Minister. And Netanyahu actually even stopped shaking hands altogether while on the campaign trail because of this exact situation. Now in the meantime, as the infected count in Israel rises to 15, the home quarantine count is expected to more than double to nearly 11,000. It was around 5,000 until this week when a high schooler and the nation's 15th infected person was announced, and the 1,100 people from his high school, as well as the 5,300 people sat near him at a recent local soccer match, must now go into isolation. Then finally, that's not all. With the new reports in mind, the health ministry is now expanding its quarantine directorate. In addition to China, Macau, Hong Kong, Thailand, Singapore, South Korea, Japan, and Italy, Israelis recently returning now from Germany, France, Switzerland, Austria, and Spain also need to enter 14 days of quarantine. Meanwhile, it looks like Israel's premier airline, El Al, is falling apart amid major losses because of the coronavirus. The airline has cut the salaries of its senior staff by 20 percent, axed 160 employees, and is planning to lay off 1,000 more. Worst of all, the airline is cutting back on regular flights to Europe due to low demand. Flights have been totally halted to Italy and are now being cut down to Cyprus, Vienna, Budapest, Brussels, and Frankfurt. And Elal says that it will allow travelers who are set to fly to Thailand and Japan between April 30th and July 31st to change their flights free of charge. And get this, Israel, which is a smaller Israeli airline, has also announced marked down tickets of $61 with free cancellation to European destinations this week to try and get travelers back in the air. So it might actually be time for us to be booking some vacations in advance. We'll see. Maybe. We'll yeah. see if those prices we'll actually, you know, last into I already started checking. I wanted to see if I book a trip yeah. in advance. We'll see. If, you know. All right. All right. In related news, nearly 3,000 people have now died of the coronavirus, with another 82,000 infected. So Israel is not the only one on the defensive when it comes to dealing with the spread of the disease. In fact, Israeli researchers say that they may even have a vaccine ready within the next few weeks. And ILTV's Nittany Manson has the details. A vaccine for the deadly and novel coronavirus. It seems so far away, yet one may be available within just the next 90 days, thanks to researchers at the Israeli Migal Galilee Research Institute. According to a press release from Israeli Science and Technology Minister of Ophira Kunis, Israeli scientists at Migal have formulated the vaccine based on their research for a vaccine against the infectious bronchitis. And if all goes as planned, the finished coronavirus vaccine would be available in every marketplace worldwide soon after. But wait! There's more. Israeli biomed firm Batam Advance says it's developed an all-new coronavirus diagnostic kit that gives results in as little as 25 minutes. And after testing the kit across several labs and hospitals, Batam says it will begin production ASAP from its Rome facilities. Meanwhile, Israeli government and health authorities are again calling on the nation to exercise extreme caution with respect to the virus's spread. Prime Minister Netanyahu is reminding citizens that anyone with any signs of the virus should call health services immediately immediately for advice, and Israeli hospital staff are likewise participating in a new Inonation social project where they're giving advice to coronavirus patients from all around the world. All right. All right.
As Israelis head to the polling stations, supporters of Israel abroad are heading to the annual APAC policy conference. And so far, this year's summit has been an especially monumental one. The 2020 American-Israel Public Affairs Committee Conference was first launched into the limelight this year with the news that Democratic Party candidate for President Senator Bernie Sanders would be boycotting the event. Sanders explains that he's concerned about how AIPAC provides a platform for Israeli leaders whom he calls bigoted, racist, and reactionary. He also says that if elected, he would consider returning the United States Embassy to Tel Aviv from Jerusalem. Israeli leaders, on the other hand, like Israeli Ambassador to the UN, Dani Danon, have been blasting Sanders for his comments. Danon says Sanders is either an ignorant fool, a liar, or both. But meanwhile, it seems Sanders really is the one missing out, as the APAC conference is making several explosive headlines, including two speakers from nations with little to no ties to the Jewish state. First, President of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Felix Tshisekedi, says that after two decades of separation, he's ready to build a relationship with Israel. Likewise, he also says that he will soon appoint an ambassador to the Jewish state. And finally, in another landmark speech, the country of Azerbaijan has now become the first majority Shiite Muslim country to have a cabinet-level minister speak at the APAC conference. This when Azerbaijani Finance Minister Samir Sharifov took to the stage to announce the widening of cooperations between Israel and Azerbaijan. Now for a minute, let's turn our attentions to elections across the pond as Super Tuesday's winners have been announced. And with Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden scoring the biggest wins, the Democratic candidates for president are starting to really thin out. Buttigieg and Klobuchar are out, and Gabbard is trailing with just one delegate's support, leaving former Vice President Biden, former Mayor Michael Bloomberg, and Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren in the race for the Democratic nomination. But realistically, with Bloomberg and Warren so far earning just 12 and 35 nominations respectively, it's unlikely that either of them will be going up against President Trump in the upcoming 2020 elections, especially after the Democratic primary Super Tuesday results, in which Warren lost to Bernie Sanders in her home state of California. So that leaves Biden with 371 nominations to Sanders' 301. I tell you with absolute confidence, we are going to win the Democratic nomination. It feels good. I, I don't know what the outcome, what the actual results are, but it feels good. And uh, we're feeling optimistic. I think we're going to do well in some other states as well. Now, even though the list of presidential hopefuls is getting shorter, there are still a lot of lingering questions. Biden and Sanders have practically opposite beliefs with regards to running the country. And regardless of which one ends up going against the president, their diehard supporters are predicted to split the Democratic base, making it easier for President Trump to snag a second term. All right, well, the question here is how Israel is going to be impacted by the Democratic candidate yeah, that's chosen. All right, now you may want to think twice before you pour yourself that next glass of milk. An Israeli scientist claims that he has found tiny pieces of plastic in three different kinds of milk, and experts are concerned about the long-term implications on your health. Microplastics are tiny plastic particles that are less than five millimeters long, and they usually form when plastic waste is washed into oceans and rivers and begins to break down. But today, they found their way into almost every ecosystem on Earth, including the products that we consume like salt, fish, and beer. And they're so hard to see, actually, that they could even be in the air that we breathe. Now, Israeli Dr. Noam Vanderhal from the University of Haifa has found that three different brands of milk in Israel sold in totally different packaging also contain microplastics. And he even visited a dairy farm and took samples from one of the large tanks where the milk is held before being distributed to buyers. Still, Dr. Vanderhal suspects that the bottling process is the main source of contamination since the milk tested after having been packaged contained more microplastic particles. So what does this mean for our health? Should we stop drinking milk? Today, there haven't been any findings showing that consuming microplastics directly harms human health, but the damaging impact on marine organisms is becoming more apparent. And the research around microplastics is alarming. A recent study has revealed that each Israeli consumes around 2,000 pieces of microplastic each year, and the question now is what the world needs to do about it. It's official. Israel has just selected their national song for the 2020 Eurovision singing competition. And it's intense. ILTV's Nini Manson has the scoop, of course. All right, guys. So for those of you who don't know what the Eurovision is, it's a huge deal. Um, in Israel and in Europe, it's an annual international singing competition that's been going on since 1956. Over 50 countries compete each year by performing a song to represent their nation on the big stage. No, I absolutely love the Eurovision. It's a real shame that this event doesn't actually include countries from other parts of the world as well, because it's so <laughs> yeah. much fun. I know. Well, last year, the Eurovision was actually held in Israel because we 
won back in 2018 with Neta Barzilai's performance of the hit song, I'm Not Your Toy. Yeah, I remember she made history as the third Israeli to have won the Eurovision for the Jewish state. And people were going crazy here. Yeah, and because she won in Portugal in 2019, the Eurovision was actually held in Tel Aviv since the winning nation always gets to host the event in the coming year. Yeah, so this year Israel's very own Eden Aline will be representing Israel at the event in Rotterdam, Netherlands. Um, and the people have spoken. Last night, Israelis voted for her to sing the song Feker Libi. So, so tell us about the song, because I heard that she's singing in a bunch of languages. Yeah, actually four languages. Um, Eden is of Ethiopian descent, and the song that's been chosen for her to sing has lyrics um, in Amharic, as well as Arabic, English, and Hebrew. Even the title is in Ethiop the Ethiopian language, and it means beloved or the love of my life. Very cool. Now, it's interesting because unlike in the past, this year Israel created videos of her singing all four of the possible songs mm. that could have been selected for her to perform um, at the Eurovision. So the Israelis that actually voted had a chance to really choose clearly what they wanted based on her singing performances of each of the songs. Yeah, they used to do that back in the 80s, but for whatever reason, they changed that um, until now. And definitely check out the videos online. They're super fun. And anyhow, we're so excited for Eden, and I really hope the song will do better for us than last year, because Israel came in 23rd, which was a bit of a downer after a big win in 2018. Yeah, yeah I can't wait to see the Eurovision again this year, though. You know, I, I wasn't really that big into it until you moved to Israel. It's a, Then you get into it, It yeah. absorbs you, yeah. Well, for those of you who are interested, it's going to be from May 12th to May 16th, and thanks for joining us, Nittany. Mm. My pleasure. Now, in other news, in spite of fears of coronavirus and the closing of Israel's borders, 40,000 people still flooded into Tel Aviv for the annual Tel Aviv Marathon. But that's not the only major marathon news coming from the Jewish state this weekend. With nearly a full minute lead over second place, Israeli runner Lona Chemtai Salpeter has just taken first at the annual Tokyo Marathon on Sunday. And while she was at it, she set a new women's record for the course at just 2 hours 17 minutes too. But that's not all. Salpeter's time in Japan also breaks the Israeli national record, which Salpeter also set, by over two minutes, making hers the eighth best women's marathon time in history. So what does this mean? Well, with this latest gold medal, the Kenyan-born Salpeter is guaranteed a spot back in Japan in July at the 2020 Olympic Summer Games. Here is a very bizarre story. Israeli researchers have made an accidental discovery that is completely shaking how scientists view the animal world. They've just discovered a creature that doesn't need oxygen to breathe. This tiny salmon parasite called the Heneguia salminicola is a relative of the jellyfish and corals. But unlike its cousins, it apparently gave up breathing oxygen to be able to produce more energy. So why is this so groundbreaking? Well, until now, breathing oxygen has been considered something that every animal and human on Earth does. But this discovery shows that evolution can go in a very strange direction. According to the researchers from Tel Aviv University's School of Zoology, it's generally thought that organisms become more complex during evolution. But this animal has evolved in the opposite way. It has actually shed unnecessary genes responsible for breathing oxygen because of how much energy it consumes in doing so. So therefore, this Israeli team is showing that this organism actually became simpler over time. Talk about a bizarre find. All right, the southern city of Eilat is Israel's gorgeous window to the Red Sea, and it's one of the most popular tourist destinations in the country for mm -hmm. Israelis. And luckily for us, it's time for YVT's Beautiful Faces of Israel segment, produced by the incredible Inon and Natan, and we're headed to Eilat now. Take a look. This time, we are in Eilat, the resort town of Israel located in the south of the country on the Red Sea coast. Elat offers a variety of entertainment attractions and hotels, and we're going to recommend you the best. Elat is blessed with the most amazing and unique coral reef in the world, with an underwater marine observatory situated in the heart of the reef. The park offers its visitors a rare opportunity to enter the natural and abundant marine kingdom of the Red Sea, an unforgettable experience for both young and old. to dive deeper into the depths of the Red Sea with the diving club, Marina Divers, known for the amazing professionalism and experience of diving in the Red Sea. For 
diving enthusiasts, we recommend a very suitable hotel. Blue Hotel Elat, the signature hotel of the Reef Diving Group, offers a unique, homely atmosphere that appeals to anyone searching for a reasonably priced, good sleeping accommodation. The Blue Hotel is especially aimed at scuba divers, surfers, water sports enthusiasts, cyclists, and anyone seeking a pleasant atmosphere and in an inexpensive inn to rest for the night. Elat also offers a varied culinary experience. We chose to recommend the best. The first is the small Brazil restaurant located in the residential area of Elat and offers a special local atmosphere that combines real Brazilian entertainment and a culinary experience of meats. recommend Caesar Quality Hotel, a is suitable for families. Another hotel we would recommend is the Orchidaha Hotel, located on a mountain facing the sea and designed like a Thai village. Another recommendation for a hotel is the Reef Hotel, located on the beach which offers a unique atmosphere of freedom. God, isn't that gorgeous? I know, I absolutely love a lot. And just looking at those visuals makes me want to go yeah, this weekend. Super so. relaxing. It's a Might wonderful a place to go and hang out. Uh, I'm a big fan in case you couldn't figure it out. But in the meantime, for those of you who want to check out more videos like this about where to travel in the Holy Land, go to www.tbf-news.com and download the app Why Travel. We'll be back with more next week. That's it for ILTV's weekly review. See you next week.